What's up guys, I'm Avionics and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, which we will be actually making today in this tutorial, an animated subscribe button for your YouTube channel and your videos. So first things first, make sure you go down in the video description below and there is a Google Drive download link where you can download the files that we will be using for this project, which is the mouse click sound effect and the mouse pointer. All right, so let's go into Adobe After Effects and let's go to New Composition. And we're going to go ahead and just leave the name Comp1. Our duration is going to be three seconds right here. Or actually make that four seconds. Hit OK. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag our files into our project panel over here. So we have our mouse pointer and our clicking sound effect. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create our button rectangle. So go up here and make sure you select the rounded rectangle tool and just go ahead and simply draw out a rectangle about this size. And then we are going to add our fill effect to this real quick. Let's go over here to the right and click on effects and presets and type in the word fill and then you'll see this fill under generate. That's the fill we want. Go ahead and drag that on top of our shape layer. And go ahead up here in the effect controls. Go ahead and click the red box. We want a light gray color. Not too light because we're going to have the white text above it sitting on top of it. And that's about good. So hit OK. Let's go ahead and rename our shape layer. So click on our layer and then right click. Select rename. Change it to button. Okay, so next we are going to position this to where we want it. In general, we want it in the lower right hand corner. So make sure you select the selection tool. Shortcut is the V key on the keyboard and just drag it into place right around there. All right, so now let's go ahead and add our text. So go up here and hit layer, new text. Choose your character. And right now I'm just going to use Arial. So I'm just going to type out the word subscribe. And then using the selection tool again, drag it on top of your button. Make sure it's on top of your button layer. That way it's visible. And then kind of center it. And then we're going to resize it here. And I'm just going to use the S for scale, the S key to bring up the scale parameter by clicking on the layer and then hit S. There you go. You have the scale and just clicking and dragging the X or the Y right there. And then hit the P key to bring up the position parameter. That's the shortcut for that one. And then I'm going to bring it up on the Y axis here a little bit. Click away. Just like so. And now we are going to parent and link the subscribe text to our button. So whatever happens to the button, the subscribe will do the same. So click and drag the width and then drag it on top of the button and then release. And now we are going to animate our subscribe button coming in in the frame and then out of the frame. So over here, click on the drop down arrow for transform. And here your position, the X axis right here, go ahead and slide it out of view. We're going to start just outside the frame like so. Make sure your place slider is at the very beginning. Hit the stopwatch to add our first keyframe and then drag your slider out to the one second mark. Actually drag it out to, yeah, drag it out to the one second mark. And then we want to slide the X axis into the frame again, just like so. And it added our keyframe for that position. So now drag your slider over to the, uh, let's drag it to the 2 second and 20, 20th frame mark. Right here and make sure the uh, time marker correlates with your slider over here on the left. And then click the add keyframe button again. And then drag your slider over to the 3 second 15th frame mark. Right there. And then we're going to slide the X axis out again as it adds the keyframe automatically once you start moving stuff around. Just like that. 
Now, if you preview it, hitting the spacebar, it has that abrupt coming in and abrupt coming out. We don't want that. We want it to ease in and ease out. So highlight these four keyframes and then hit the F9 key or the function F9 for Mac users. And now they have all um, turned into ease in, ease out keyframes. So if you hit the play button again, or the space bar, you'll see that it eases in and then it eases out, which is uh, exactly what we want. So now we're going to animate the uh, the fill color. So go back over here to effects, drop down, and then drop down the fill. And here we're going to start out with gray, right? So bring your plate all the way to the very beginning. Go ahead and click the color stopwatch. So drag your slider to the two second mark. Exactly two seconds here to zero zero. We are going to click the add keyframe button and then drag your slider three one, two, three frames over. And then here we're going to click on the color box and we're going to make this all red. Hit OK. And then so now if you hit the preview button, the space bar, it'll come in as gray, then it'll turn red, and it animates back out. So now let's add our mouse pointer into the mix. So go over here to the left and then hit the project tab and then we're going to scroll up over here. We are going to drag the pointer into our project timeline right above the subscribe and it is way too big so we're going to go ahead and scale that all the way down. So with the layer selected hit S and then um, go over to the X axis or the X parameter and just type the number 3. That's the perfect size we want. So now go ahead and drag your playhead to the one second tenth frame mark right here. And we are going to have this right out of view down below. So make sure you have your selection tool selected. Just drag it out of view right around here. And then let's go ahead and hit the space bar, hold it down, and let's move our preview so we can see everything. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in a little over here. Let's choose 200%. Okay, so let's add our first keyframe for our pointer. So let's go ahead and click layer name uh, pointer and then hit the P key to bring up our position parameter. Go ahead and hit the stopwatch. Now drag your slider over 10 frames, so the 20th frame mark. And then drag the X axis so the pointer comes up like that. Drag your slider to the exact two second mark. And then here we are going to click on layer name and then we want the scale parameter, so hit the S. Go ahead and hit the stop watch to add our first keyframe. And then move it over three frames. And then we're gonna change this to two. Click two, enter, and then Drag three frames over again, one, two, three, which should be the two second six frame mark. And then let's change this back up to three. So it looks like, so it has the effect of looking like it's being clicked. So if you hit the space bar to preview, it comes in, it clicks. So now we'll animate it so it goes away. So now drag your slider to the two second 15th frame mark. So if you click on the drop down for the pointer and then click it again so you see all the transform parameters. Here we need to make sure that this keyframe is the same all the way through the 2 second and 15 frame mark. Go ahead and just click on the keyframe here. So now it stays on screen all the way to here. And then from here we're going to drag our slider 10 frames over, so 2 second and 25th mark. And then here we will go ahead and adjust our Y axis and it automatically adds the keyframe once you start moving it and it comes out of view. So now it should act the way we want it. There you go. But it's acting abruptly as it comes in and out, so we're going to select just these four frames, the four position frames, and then hit the F9 or function F9 for Mac again. Let's go ahead and replay it. Spacebar for replaying. There you go. 
So now all we have to do is add the sound effect. So go back to the project panel and click and drag that into your project composition. Go ahead and click the drop down arrow right here. Drop down arrow again for audio and then drop down arrow again for waveform. Now basically we want to time the, the waveform right with this keyframe where it scales down. So all I have to do is drag, drag this so it lines up just like that. Now if you hit the spacebar to preview again. Perfect. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. Fit. Now it's a little bit loud, so let's go ahead and adjust our levels. Let's change it to negative eight decibels because most likely you're gonna be using this as an overlay as it overlays your video and your audio and you don't want the clip to be overpowering. So bring the playhead back over once again, hit the preview button, spacebar. Perfect. So now the last thing we gotta do is render it out. So go up to composition and then click on add to render queue. And then here we are going to change our output module So once you click on that, you're gonna change the channels under video output from RGB to RGB plus alpha, and then click on format options. And then here we're gonna change the video codec from animation, we want it to Apple ProRes 4444. And then we're gonna hit okay, okay. And then go ahead and change the output file name and location to where you want. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop and I'm gonna change the name to subscribe button for YouTube hit save and then go ahead and hit render and it should only take a few seconds and we are all done so now if you go and preview your actual file that you created here we go I'm just gonna hit spacebar to preview on the Mac it should have a transparent background there you go. And that is how to make the subscribe button animated for your YouTube channel and videos. If my tutorial helped you at all, I'd appreciate you hitting that like button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And also, please go ahead and hit that real subscribe button down below and ring that notifications bell so you can be notified of future tech tutorials like this. Alright guys, I'm Avionics. See you next time.